Welcome to today's video. I am Corinne Blackstone. We're going to be working with Starcraft Electrofoil and Caesar Easyweed Adhesive to make this really fun multicolored foil sweatshirt. Now this may seem really intimidating, but I promise you it's a lot easier than you think. I'll link everything that we used for this video down below. You're going to need a Cricut or other cutting machine. You're going to need a standard grip mat, Starcraft Electrofoil, Caesar Easyweed or Starcraft Adhesive, also an option. And then you will also need a pin pen and a heat press. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the PNG for this. So I'm gonna upload my image by going to upload. And then I wanna choose upload image up in the upper left-hand area right here. And then I just can browse for it or I can drag and drop, but I'll just browse for it because I have it saved. So it's called Mick Balloon. That's just what I called it. Now this is a PNG, but I do need to remove this little section right here, that little shine. If you don't want the shine, you don't have to remove it, but I do want that. So I'm going to choose complex and I'm going to click continue. And what's weird is it's clearly not there. So we don't have to click on that to remove it. But if you did, you would just click in this area where that white was. It's up to you whether you want it or not. And I will show you how to remove it if you don't want it and it's already removed like it is here. I'm gonna click apply and continue and I wanna save it over here as the cut image. And then I'm gonna click upload. From here, I want to select the image and add it to my canvas. Now I'll show you how to remove that little extra shine if you don't want it. Um, and it's super simple. Let me make this a little bit smaller. All you need to do is have your design selected and then go to the word contour. And then all you have to do is click right here or you can click on the actual little section. And then you'll see now that my balloon is solid. It's totally up to you and the way you wanna do it. There's no right or wrong way. I kinda like the shine. But if you don't like it, you can absolutely take it off. Doesn't matter, whatever you wanna do. Now, what I wanna do from here is I'm gonna make a couple balloons. I wanna make like a balloon bunch. So I'm gonna size this down and I'm gonna angle it a little bit like this so that it's gonna be able to make a little balloon bunch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the balloon by clicking the two squares up here and then I'm going to flip it and I want to flip it horizontally and that way now what you'll see is my balloons are able to sit a little bit differently. Now you can angle them more if you want to. You can just make them a little further apart. It's really up to you but what I want to do is I want these bottom ties to sit together so that it makes a bunch. Now that I've got those done here, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate again. And I want to make one that's going to go right in the middle. So I'm going to just angle him so that he is normally straight. Now his little looper duper is kind of weird. And actually now that I'm looking at it, I think the shine looks weird over here. So I'm going to flip him and I'm going to flip him horizontal again. And I'm just going to angle him the other way because I just realized that I don't really like where his little um, shine was. I think it looks weird. I don't know. I didn't like it. Now there's a lot of things that we can do to kind of play with this and really make it work because you see how the string isn't going to match up with our other one unless we like angle it like a ton, which would look weird. So what I'm gonna do to this balloon is I'm gonna take a square and I'm gonna remove the string off of it so that I can move them independently. So I'm just gonna take this square, I'm gonna angle it a little bit so I can get it right under the edge of this little triangle that creates the um, part of the balloon. I'm gonna make the square bigger and then all I want to do is select the balloon and the square, and I'm going to click slice. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this, but I really want mine to sit a little bit better. So I'm going to delete the balloon, and I'm going to just keep one string. I'm going to go ahead, and I want to flip this string, and I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to get it so that it fits with this 
piece of my Mickey balloon. And it's okay if the uh, little loops go different directions because when you have the balloons, they're gonna be in different directions. Now from here, I'm gonna be able to put my Mickey balloon back down on to my string and they may not be perfect and that's completely okay if the strings are not matching up completely perfect nobody's going to notice except you so i'm probably going to do the same with this balloon as well so that i can have the string sitting a little more straight but before i do that i want to select this mickey balloon and this string and i'm just going to combine them and i'm going to weld them that way they're all one piece so that if i go to move anything the string doesn't come off of that balloon now you can do that for any of the balloons that you want to. We can play around with this. You're just gonna arrange them in a way that makes you happy and the way that you want them to be. Now you can do this with any design that you want. It doesn't have to be these balloons, but this is just the design I'm choosing to use. So again, I'm gonna make the box big enough that it'll go over the string. I'm gonna select both of them and I wanna slice so that I can take the string off of the balloon. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the extra parts and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take the string and I'm gonna get it where I want it on to my design because this string is gonna end up being bigger because obviously this balloon, we can't have it sitting right here. The way we're gonna design this, I don't want them to overlap. So I am gonna make our string bigger, which will thicken the string, which is totally okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can do this however you want. If your string's a little thicker than the others, I'm not super concerned about it. Now again, you're gonna play with it, figure out what you want it to look like, figure out where you want your balloons to sit, totally up to you. Now what's nice about this is you can take the strings off of any of them that you want to, readjust them however you want. I could even angle this one a little bit this direction to make the mouse sit more into the middle. And the string doesn't necessarily have to go into the center of the other strings. It's okay if it doesn't, if it goes to the side a little bit, Nobody's going to notice. And honestly, like I said, when you hold on to strings, it's completely like whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now, I do want to make some extras. I want to do two other balloons right here and here, and those are going to be smaller. So I'm just going to duplicate my balloon and I'm going to make these ones quite a bit smaller. I want to angle these back to zero because I'll have these ones sitting straight. And then I'm just gonna play with the size on this one because I don't want it to be huge, but I want it to look like it's kind of behind that one. Pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna duplicate this one because I'm gonna put one over here as well so that it sits behind this Mickey. Now, the one thing you're gonna notice is it's gonna sit a little bit different and you have this little bump of string over here. So what I wanna do, because I don't want that string to stick out, I'm just gonna use a shape again and I'm gonna just slice this a little bit so that that string is shorter and it's not gonna stick out behind this balloon's head. That way I don't have kind of like a rogue piece of the balloon string sticking out because nobody's gonna really see any of the other parts of the string. So I'm just gonna kind of get this where I'm happy and kind of like put it wherever. It doesn't have to be exactly lined up because when you have balloons, they're never gonna be perfectly lined up. That's something that you have to kind of remember when you're working with your designs. Now I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. So what I wanna do is I'm going to select the entire design and I'm going to use the union option, the unite here. And what that does is it removes any cut lines. So it's gonna cut this all as one single piece instead of having cut lines between any of like my design because this is all gonna be cut on the clear adhesive from Caesar. And then we're gonna lay the felt or the foil over this. So now what I wanna do is I wanna size this for my shirt. This is going on a sweatshirt. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than I normally would for a t-shirt. I like a bigger design on my sweatshirt. So I go about 10 inches on a sweatshirt, but you do whatever makes you happy and the way you want it to look. There's no right or wrong way. Now, the next thing that we typically would do when we are working with HTV, which this is, is we would mirror this, but there's no words on this. So if you want your shines to be on the right side, you can leave it as is, but, but if you don't care which side your shine is on, it doesn't matter. The way we're cutting it here, your shine would be on the left side, but if you want your design to look exactly like it shows here on the screen on your shirt, you're gonna need to flip it and you wanna flip it horizontally. And what that does is that mirrors your image so that now when you put the shine on your shirt, it'll be on the side that it showed originally. I hope that makes sense. But when you're working with HTV, most of the time you wanna mirror your image. Now, when we click make, 
what you'll see is we're gonna have our little design on our mat. Now this again is gonna cut on the Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive, which is like a frosty look, and then it looks clear when you press it. This is a really fun project to do, and I love doing this with the different colors of foil. It's super easy, super fun, and I promise you it's a lot easier than you think it is even though we're gonna be using foil pieces. Now this cuts on the everyday iron on setting. So I'm gonna get this cut on the machine. I'm gonna show you how to weed this and then we can press it onto the shirt. We'll also cut out the foil pieces and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to working with that so that you can make sure your foil comes out really, really nice. The first thing that you're going to need to start with is your Caesar Easy Weed Adhesive. This is a great product, but it is a little bit tricky to work with because it is just a frosted sheet. So you're going to want to note that one side of your frosted sheet feels rough and then the other side feels really, really smooth and it's super shiny. And then you'll notice that this side is not as shiny. So for this one, the shiny side here is your carrier sheet, the smooth side, and that's the side that you're going to put down on your mat. So all we do is I like to leave mine on the roll. I find that just so much easier and I find it to be a little bit less wasteful. That way I don't have to try to cut it exactly the size of my design and then I can cut it much closer to my design. Now you want to make sure that you place this down. I'm just using the standard grip mat and I'm just rolling this on to my mat. Now we are doing a pretty large design for this one, so we're probably gonna use quite a bit of our sheet. So then I just turn it around and then all I have to do is load it in to my machine. This cuts on the everyday iron-on setting and it's super quick and super easy. Finished, all you have to do is unload it. We'll unload it from the mat and then I'm gonna show you how to weed. Before I take this off the mat, I'm gonna cut it because I find it easier to see the cut lines when it's against the mat. And you can actually leave it on the mat to weed it as well, it's up to you. But I can see that the end of my strings are right here, just below the line on about the 11. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut across and I'm gonna try to keep it as neat as I can, but. Sometimes these don't exactly go super straight, but that's okay. As long as it's relatively neat, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and we're gonna save the roll, obviously. Now, like I said, you can leave this on your mat to weed if you want to. Just really kind of depends on the person. Sometimes it's easier to see. Sometimes you prefer it off. Um, I do have like a strip over here, but I'm not gonna bother saving it. I've got a bunch of those size saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off my mat. I'm a prefer to weed off the mat kind of girl. I also find that weeding on the mat does lessen the life of your mat in general. So that's just something to think about. So I'm gonna start over here where I can see that I have a little shine and you can see how easy it is to see once you actually weed away some of the parts to see where you've weeded, but it is a little difficult in the beginning to kind of see where you need to weed. But I do recommend having a bright light up ahead, like overhead, and that really does help. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all weeded out and then we'll get out our shirt and we'll cut our foil and we're gonna get this all pressed on. next step is to center our design on to our sweatshirt. So I fold it with the uh, not sticky side out or the sticky side out I should say and then I find where my center is or like just about where center is and I put just a little crease in the sheet. Then what you want to do is it goes about three fingers below your collar and then you want to just straighten it out based on these sleeves. Now this sometimes helps is if you have a little extra carrier sheet, trim it off of the other side. It'll help you visualize center a little bit better if you have a little less clear sheet in the way. Now the nice thing is with this one, because we don't have words or anything, it's gonna be a little less obvious if it's not perfectly straight or centered. You never wanna center a hoodie on the pocket. The pocket is always going to be a little bit off. 
Now I know it is hard to see for you guys on here because of like the color of the adhesive and all of that, but it is pretty easy to see it in person. So all I do is I use my hands more than anything just to see and feel where I think center is. So I'm using the line here of my sleeve and this sleeve just to get them even and where I'm happy. I think I wanna go this way a little bit, but I don't wanna go that way like a ton, just like the literal tiniest bit. Now I don't recommend necessarily using like this part of the hood either where like the little creases because that's not centered either. The center of your hood is not actually center. So you want to use your sleeves and you want to use your um, edges of your sweatshirt to make sure everything is centered. So I'm just kind of holding it and looking at it and just seeing if I'm happy with where it's sitting, which I am. So I'm happy where this is. So our next thing we have to do before we press our adhesive is we need to cut our foil. So I have white, blue, red and orange, and then purple and green colors. So these are all the foils that we're gonna use with our design. So I wanna do it in like a certain order. So I think I want like this one green, orange, red, purple, blue, I think, or maybe blue, purple, so I think that's, I think, yeah, I think that order would be okay. Kind of goes like this direction. So the first one I'm gonna cut is this big one, which will be green. So I'm gonna pull this out. I do keep mine stored in these little plastic bags that they come in. It helps keep the foil protected from getting any like damage to it. So what you'll wanna do, and this is a point where you're gonna waste a little bit, but don't worry, like you get so much on these rolls that to waste a little bit of foil is gonna be completely fine. So I'm gonna cut this bigger than what I actually need. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it, and I think that's probably bigger than I'm gonna need. You'll notice that I put it over my design. So I'm just gonna trim that down. Then I'm gonna slide this over. We don't need this roll anymore. So you can just set that over to the side. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna put this over my design. Now I will be honest with you, right here, these little um, strings, you're gonna have a little bit of a fight with them, but I'll show you how to do it so that you make sure they turn out white. So currently right now, we're gonna ignore those strings being in our way. We just wanna make sure that we're only covering the Mickey head. Now, you may end up with a little bit of a funny angle here because you're gonna have to be really careful not to get it over this little edge of where the other balloon is. So if you run into that issue, what I want you to do is just cut a little notch out of the top of your foil. So this is gonna be just a matter of making a foil piece that's going to fit over this Mickey without getting in the way of this Mickey or any of the others. So you can see currently that it's definitely coming too far this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. And you only need to trim it off enough that it's not touching any of the other pieces of your adhesive. So you'll see here, this is where the loop is. So I wanna make sure that I'm coming in and I'm trimming off the foil so that it doesn't go over the loop in the balloon next to it. But I also wanna make sure that I don't cut it so much that I can't get my Mickey covered. Now again, don't worry about the string down here, not concerned about him, not really concerned about that one at all, but we just wanna make sure that none of the other pieces of foil cover any of the parts. But we'll deal with the strings in a minute, so just ignore those. So our green one looks good, we're gonna to have to angle them a little bit, but that's okay. That's pretty good, I think he'll fit fine. So then we said we wanna do this one in orange. Now you do wanna set your foil somewhere where it's not gonna get damaged or blow away because if these get crinkled, it will uh, cause the foil to come off of your uh, sheet. So I'm gonna do the foil on this one. So again, I'm just gonna kind of cut out a square. Does not have to be a perfect square, doesn't have to be too small. You actually wanna make them a little bigger than you're gonna need them just so you can trim them down if need be. So once I've got that one trimmed out, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that color over to the side. And actually, I think I was gonna do this one red, but that's okay, it's fine. I don't really care. So honestly, I can make this one fit fine, but I'm gonna need to trim the corner off over here so that it doesn't go over the balloon underneath. So you just sort of kind of play with it 
and figure out which direction you need to kind of angle things. So I can cut a little bit off the bottom over here too, just to prevent it from touching this balloon. And you want to just angle it enough that it'll fit in there. And that looks good. I think that's fine. It's not going to cover any of this balloon or this one. So I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming these because you kind of see how it works. If you have questions, let me know in the comments, but I'm going to go ahead, finish trimming these up and then we will be ready to go. And actually I'll come back and show you how we're going to do the strings uh, before we actually press everything. So for my last piece, which is my red, I'm just going to show you really quick. You can actually lay this so that it sits on top of the other colors, like the purple, because it's not going to transfer over on to the purple because we have this clear protective sheet. Plus it's not touching any adhesive. Now, I've got all those colors cut out. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put these over to the side. You want to keep them nice and safe and flat. You don't want to drop those on the ground or get them wrinkled in any way. And we're going to bring out our white. So the white is going to be the strings of our um, little balloons. Now what's great about this is it's super easy. So what I'm first going to do, I'm just going to cut a small strip. And if I waste a little bit, I'm again, not super worried about it. I'm just going to cut off this small little strip and place the rest over to the side. Now, what I want to do is I want to cut a piece that's going to fit right here in between the um, little balloon and the head of the mouse balloon. So we're just going to cut little pieces that are going to fit in between. Now, listen, am I going to make this perfect? Probably not. Am I going to end up with some string that may end up a little colored? Probably, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be like that good. You honestly don't even have to do this if you choose not to. You can just have your strings like these ones up here be the same color as your designs of your balloons if you want to. It's really up to you, but you can see here, like I'm just going to get this kind of shoved in here. It's not like I said, not going to be perfect, but it's definitely a color that I just didn't want like all of the color to be. So down here, I'm going to do the same thing on this balloon. And I think I'm going to just cut a little piece off of this big strip really quick. And then all I do is kind of fit it in. And again, is it going to be perfect? Pfft, nope. Do I care? Also, no. Um, I just don't want it to be over the balloon in any way. I just want these strings to just be at least somewhat white. So I'm not covering the whole string and that's completely okay. Not a big deal. Same with down here. Like I'm not super worried. I don't think either one of these pieces will fit over the string fully. Actually that one will. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one like this. And that will be the piece that can go over this. This one here, because it's angled a little bit funny, I think is going to need a wider piece and same with this big long piece. Now, we do have a lot of pieces of foil to work with and that's just the nature of this project. So you're just going to want to be prepared that you're going to be using quite a few pieces of foil and I recommend that you take your time if you want to do it this way. Again, you don't have to, you can make your uh, foil, you can make your you know pieces whatever you want, you don't have to cover up every little detail. We're going to go ahead and press the uh, adhesive first and what you're going to see is it's kind of opaque white now. It will turn clear once it's heated. Once it's done, go ahead and lift up your press and now it's really hard to see. So what you're going to do is this is a warm peel product so you can go ahead and take the carrier sheet, this clear sheet off right away. Now, I do recommend taking this over to your table to lay out your foil. It's going to be a little bit easier, but if you can see okay on your press, you can absolutely do it on your press. Since I can see pretty well from here, I'm going to go ahead and put my foil down. But I'm going to use a quick little trick of using some heat tape to hold my pieces down. So make sure that your heat tape doesn't overlap um, on to any of your adhesive while you're doing this. So this may just be a little difficult. And honestly, I think I'm going to skip these little ones at the top. I realize those ones are just annoying and I just don't want to deal with them. <laughs> so we're going to skip the ones at the top just because I think the little pieces of string, nobody's going to notice. So what I'm going to do is I want to get this lined up and I want to make sure again, that it's not overlapping anywhere on to my design. And you're able to see, I promise it's easier to see for me than it probably is for you where all of our pieces of our design are. 
So I'm just kind of scooching this around until I'm happy with where it's sitting. And then I'm just gonna put a piece of heat tape down here at the bottom where it's not sitting on top of anything else. Then we've got this little piece, which is for this Minnie Mouse over here. So again, I can see where the base is. So I'm just gonna line that up and I'm gonna take another little piece of heat tape and place that down. This is just gonna help prevent anything from sliding around when you go to put any of your other foil on top of this. So again, I'm just gonna find the bottom of that. And again, this piece is really big, it's fine. That one I'm not really worried about. Now I'm gonna come in with my colors. And like I said, if the color ends up on the string up there, I am not worried about it. I just wanna keep the color from getting on any of the other balloons. So I'm gonna do the orange one right here. And again, just placing a piece of heat tape to keep that from sliding around our big blue guy at the top. Again, it can go over the other foil as long as it's not getting on any of the other adhesive pieces. So like right here, I've got the mouse ear, so I just wanna watch that and make sure that it's not touching the other mouse and tape it down. And then I just wanna double check. You can feel the adhesive as well. So if that helps you find your part, then by all means, go for it. Use that at, to your advantage. Then I'm gonna make sure that this one is covered, the purple one, and then I just wanna cover the red one. I'm not gonna tape the red down. I don't think it needs it. I think it'll be fine without it being taped down. So I know this looks absolutely cuckoo crazy, but this is the way to do this. Then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you press this again with heavy pressure, and I do about 15 seconds at 305. Once it's done, lift it up, but what's really important is you don't wanna get, um, you don't wanna take off any of the foil yet. You wanna let everything sit and cool. Now you may notice that you get a little bit of wrinkling here and there from some of them. That's okay, but what we wanna do is we're gonna turn our press off. I'm gonna take this over to the table. We're gonna let this fully, fully cool. Then we can peel our foil. Now that we've let this cool, it's gonna be completely cool to the touch. It's gonna to be, you're not gonna feel any warmth coming off of this at all. That's really, really important when doing foil. The next thing that we're gonna do is peel this off in the best order that we possibly can. So I'm gonna start with red because that one's on the top. What you wanna do is you grab a corner and you just pull it off like a Band-Aid. You rip it off really, really fast. Now I do see I missed a little corner over here, but I'm not really worried about it. And we did get some red over here, but I'm not super concerned. I think it's still gonna be really cute even with some color mess ups on my part. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel these off. And like I said, I'm peeling them as quickly as I can and in the order that I laid them down best I can. And look at how fun. Now granted, yeah, okay. Did we screw up a little right there? We did. Is anyone gonna notice? Probably not. So then I'm gonna grab the green. The green's a little harder to grab because that piece is a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna grab it. And again, we did get a little bit of color transfer from the other ones. Do I care? I do not. Then we're gonna do the whites and the white, whoops the white, <laughs> that one didn't wanna come off, and the white. Now I do have a little piece right here that like the white didn't do as good a job as I would have liked. Um, and then there's a little spot where it didn't stick at all, but that's again, who's gonna notice? Nobody, because this is just a fun shirt. It's not perfect and that's what I kind of love about it. But look at how pretty the foil came out. I think it looks so good, so pretty. I think this is just such a beautiful design. It was super easy to do and this is how you can do multiple layers of foil on a single shirt. And look how sparkly and shiny. And what else is really great is this is a super soft product. So it's really, really smooth, really, really soft and super easy to work with. Now one thing you do wanna note when working with foil is you never wanna repress foil. That's why you have to layer it all at once. If you repress it, it will get dull and it will look really, really yucky and it just won't look good at all. Now I did get a little spot over here where some of the white foil kind of flaked, but that'll come off in the wash because it's not actually stuck to anything. It's just for whatever reason, the white foil is always a little bit flakier than some of the others. But I think this really came out very cute, super easy to do. Again, is it perfect? No. Could I have taken a little more time laying things out? Absolutely. But I still think it came out really cute and I absolutely love it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Be sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube that we don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content that we have coming. And be sure to let me know what you think of my shirt. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.